CataractCoach.com. Another femtosecond laser cataract surgeon. So why did the surgeon use a blade to make this incision? Check it out. So you can see there's that subconjunctival hemorrhage. That's the telltale sign from the suction ring of the femtosecond laser. Good looking draping here, all the lashes out of the way, lid margin sequestered. You can see there's an astigmatic treatment in the cornea, approximately the with the rule meridian. Here's a side port blade being used to make a paracentesis. And you can see the nucleus has been divided up into six pieces. So, or sextants, and you can see a capsulotomy has been done also. So now, looks like putting in some perhaps lidocaine inside the anterior chamber for added anesthesia. And that subconjunctival hemorrhage there, you see the red ring. Of course, that'll go away. That's not going to stay permanently. That'll be gone within a couple of days. There's the viscoelastic going inside to inflate the eye. Now, here's the interesting part. Holding the eye, and a steel keratome is being used to make that incision. Why not use the laser to make the incision? Well, the steel keratome may be able to make a better incision if the surgeon has great hands like you see in this video. So here's the capsulotomy being just freed up to make sure it's uh, opened up perfectly and taken out of the eye, pushing out a little viscoelastic and now some hydrodissection being performed. So yes, in fact, I agree, a steel blade or even a diamond keratome if you want the best, make much better incisions than the femtosecond laser for the most part. And you can see this surgeon also believes in our theory of nicking those limbal vessels here. And so now going inside the eye, a little more viscoelastic, time to remove the nucleus. Let's do it. So here's a phaco probe going inside the eye. It looks like a ball tip chopper. Don't really need a sharp chopper anymore, right? If you've already broken up the nucleus. And so now this surgeon is gonna go inside and looks like still doing a stop and chop. So sculpting a little bit of a central groove there and then just doing it along those fault lines that were created, so it's really easy to split the nucleus. And again, a little bit more of a split. The, remember, these the lines that were created, these quadrants or sextants actually that were created, aren't fully separated. They don't go all the way to the periphery and all the way to the posterior capsule. So they're the, through the most part. So you may have to still put in some effort here to separate those pieces. And you can see slowly taking off pieces of the pie at a time. And here's the next piece. And then again, separating first and then bring it up. And now you could probably just bring the whole remainder up to the iris plane or the capsulotomy plane and emulsify. And you can see here, look at that edge of the capsulotomy. And you can see where that laser energy has gone through and, and cut some of that anterior cortical material too. So again, you got to be a little bit more uh, deliberate in your cortex removal during IA. There's a little last bits of the nucleus coming out. Looks pretty good. I do like the draping in this case. And I do like the eye staying in primary. This is obviously a very talented surgeon. And removing the rest of the nucleus chopper going in that safe position just to keep the posterior capsule at bay. And that looks pretty good. So definitely, you know, listen, I'm, I like a femtosecond laser. It's a neat toy, but you, know, you just don't need it for the vast majority of your cases. For a routine case, you certainly don't need to use a femtosecond laser because in a routine case, Everything's pretty easy. The femtosecond laser for me is better off for just unusual cases. Loose zonules, intumescent white cataract, things of this nature. Maybe it's if it's, if it's a tremendously dense cataract, you can use a uh, laser to deliver some energy to help soften up the nucleus. But remember still, you still got to put the phaco probe in the eye to move the cataract, the IA probe. It's not like you're making the surgery any fewer steps. You still got to do the same number of steps here. And so the laser doesn't replace the phaco machine as some patients think. Now, patients sometimes love the word laser. Oh, anything laser sounds good to me. But really, it doesn't really make a huge difference. And studies have kind of bore that out over the last decade or so. So you can see this, the technique is very nice here. It's a circumferential removal of the cortex. That looks really good. And then just getting some of those wispy strands out. And is the laser helpful in, in a really dense, brunescent, white cat? Well, no, think about it. If the, la if the, la the laser can't get through an opaque lens, if the lens is absolutely opaque, well, the laser is just light. So it's not going to penetrate that. So it looks like a lot of polish in there. I'm almost getting seasick watching this. <laughs> but I, I, I admire the effort to really polish things up. But remember, don't break the capsule. It's only a four micron thin capsule. That's pretty aggressive on the posterior capsule polishing. That looks really good, but listen, if it's my eye, don't pop the capsule. You can see that anterior 
Capital needs to be polished as well. Let's take a look here, see what's going to happen. And it looks like, oh, injecting some viscoelastic. Okay. Inflating the capture bag, probably a cohesive viscoelastic. That looks great. Nice, good, solid fill. And a little bit more. And are we ready for the lens yet? Oh, no. looks like we're going to do a capsule polishing. Okay. I hey, I like that. So these little ring devices are capsule polishers. And you can flip them over, use both sides of it. These capsule polishers, basically the edge of that ring has a little bit of a, a sharper edge. Not, not knife sharp, but enough of a, a rigid edge that you can go along and scrape or polish that under surface of the anterior capsule. That looks really nice. And you can see you get all that lens epithelial cell, that material removed. And that'll be washed out when you put the eye probe inside the eye. Now, here comes the lens delivery. You see the two corneal incisions there, the astigmatic treatments? Um, those you can open up now, or you can wait and titrate it later. And what I mean by that is, so those incisions have been made with the laser. Now, just making them obviously causes some flattening there. And you may want to just watch the patient in the post-op period and see the patient back a few weeks after surgery. And at that point, if you need a little bit more flattening, you can just, in the clinic at the slit lamp, use a blunt instrument like a Sinsky hook and open up those two um, incisions a little bit more to get a little more flattening. And you can see there's our single piece acrylic lens in the back. Looks like an Alcon Vivid lens based on that central optic. That looks very nicely positioned. Looks like a nice looking case here. Taking it all at viscoelastic. So hey, listen, the laser's a neat toy. And in this case, what's different is the surgeon decides not to use the laser to make the incisions. And that I completely understand because I think where we are today in our typical uh, cataract surgeries, you're better off using a steel keratome or even better, a diamond keratome to make your incision. It's going to be a lot cleaner than using the laser and, and it's oftentimes a little bit more predictable in terms of placement and ability to seal. So I know a lot of surgeons in our center are not using the femtosecond laser to make their incisions. Even if they use the femtosecond laser to make a capsulotomy, or astigmatic treatments, or divide up the nucleus, or soften the nucleus, they'll do that, but they won't use the laser necessarily to make that main incision. You can, and some surgeons do, but I, I kind of agree with this, this anonymous surgeon that using a steel keratome will give you a little nice result. So now finishing up the case, the rest of the case will proceed normally, and I want to thank this surgeon for submitting a very interesting video. So if you have a femtosecond laser, hey, use it! I just want to make sure we show all our users around the world that there's nothing magical about it. Cataract Coach fans know the hands are always more important than the machines. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. Cataractcoach.com. Check it out.